Hello, my name is Callum, also known as Wanderloot. Today I'm going to show you how to use Adobe Firefly, the new generative AI program. And also I'm going to explain why I think this is such an interesting product, given how many different AI products there are out there right now, what Adobe is doing differently, and how they are planning on developing this product in the future to make it even more creator centric. I personally am really excited about Adobe Firefly for a couple different reasons. The first of which is that aside from the output looking incredibly detailed and impressive, they have decoupled the ability to iteratively modify the style of the output without having to type in the prompt. They have different forms of doing that. You can modify the aspect ratio, the content type, the style, color tone, lighting, and composition. So that's a really powerful tool that I haven't seen in any other AI generator at this time. And I think that user interface is going to make it just really popular and easy to use for a lot of people. Another reason why I'm excited about Adobe Firefly is because they have trained their diffusion model, their AI generative model, based entirely on Adobe stock, along with openly licensed work and public domain content where copyright has expired. So to me, that's just looking at the generation of AI content in a completely different way than what I've seen with other platforms, and I'm excited to get into it more. Adobe Firefly is currently in the beta phase, which means that in order to get access, you have to apply to be on their waitlist. I applied two days ago and received access yesterday. It only took one day. To apply is quite easy. You just go to adobe.com. You can search Adobe Firefly beta. What you can see here on the side is they're already demonstrating it, where you you're able to have a text to image prompt that will generate an image which can then be manipulatable in the future. Now, not all of these features are currently available, but I will get into that more later. For now, let's take a look at what the program is like. Right now, Adobe Firefly is currently a web-based interface at firefly.adobe.com. In the future, they said that it will be integrated into other Adobe software like Photoshop and Illustrator, and they will also be bringing in video as well. So there will be a lot more potential for using this technology. At this time, there's only two features that are currently available for you to select from. There's text to image and text effects. They have recolor vectors coming soon, and they have a lot of potential features that are in exploration that I will get more into later in the video. I think this is a good point to talk about what is generative AI. Generative AI uses what's called a diffusion model based on a text input to generate unique AI output. Here you can go through their gallery and you can see the different prompts that were used, the text input and the image output that was provided. So here, a muted Wonderland studio. This one jumps out at me. It's a futuristic inspired border town with neon lights on the edge of a calm reflecting lake on Mars with bioluminescent plant and rocks at night. So effectively what you're able to do is you're able to turn text into images, which seems obvious, but there is a new language that is being developed here called prompting. And that's where you prompt the AI to have an output. In order to learn more about prompting, it can be helpful to scroll through and see if there are any images in the gallery that inspire you that can give you an indication on the type of prompt that you are looking to have. One thing that Adobe has done differently from other AI generative models like Midjourney and DALI and others is that Adobe trained their generative AI model on a data set of Adobe stock images, licensed work, and public domain content where copyright has expired. So one of the major differences between Adobe and the other platforms is that all of the images used to train the AI model came from free to use or licensed content. So why does this matter? This matters because a lot of people feel hesitant to get involved with AI generative art because the models were trained off of data that came from the internet as a whole. That involves a lot of images and a lot of works that artists did not necessarily give permission for. So there has been some controversy over this topic. And honestly, it's one of the reasons why I haven't played around too much with the other AI software and why I was so excited to get started with Adobe Firefly. I think that we are going to continue developing better AI ethics, 
and better internet practices to help protect creators in the future. And I'm glad to see that Adobe is taking steps now to create a program that considers the intellectual property rights of the creators that they are trying to help. Something that I'm interested in using Adobe Firefly for is to create images for my blog posts on my website that are more tailored to the specific type of content that I am talking about. Rather than going to Pixabay or Adobe stock images that and using some generic image that has been generated by someone else or has been taken by someone else, I can now generate my own image in a way that I think more accurately reflects the vibe of the content that I'm trying to share. So here I am going to search for a 3D image of the earth and click generate. So you notice that type of prompt was too short. It let me know that there's probably not enough detail here to generate the type of output that I'm looking for. So here I can go and I can modify it and see how the diffusion model generates a different AI output. Wow, so you can see here that the detail is actually quite good for the image. It did a really good job showing both day to night on the Earth and a 3D view from space. But what's happening here is based on this prompt, the diffusion model generates four different outputs, and that gives me the option to select whichever one jumps out at me the most. There are a few other options here that I think are some of the most interesting features of Adobe Firefly. One of the main ones is that instead of having to modify everything by the prompt, I actually have options to modify the output using different filters along the side. For example, I can change the aspect ratio. It's interesting how modifying the aspect ratio completely changed the perspective. So I'm gonna go back to one of one. What you just saw there too is that it didn't delete my existing prompt output just by changing the aspect ratio. I'm able to toggle back and forth without having the output modified. So if you accidentally change or you realize that after you've changed something, you would prefer to have the previously generated output, then you can always toggle back and forth between them. It's interesting here too, how you can see there's somehow two Earths being generated. So it clearly didn't understand the prompt there, which means that I can either select one of these images or I can modify my prompt to make it clear that I'm looking at the Earth from space. Another great feature is that I'm able to modify the content type here. So I can switch between photo, art, graphic, or no particular content type. This is again, different from other AI generative platforms where you have to type in a photo in the prompt or ultra realistic photo in the prompt in order to get that type of output. What's nice is with this content type generation, I can toggle back and forth between the different styles and I'll be able to see how they compare without losing my previously generated prompt. So now going down to styles, you can see that there are many different forms. There are a lot of different ways to modify the output based on different style formats, based on different themes, based on different techniques, based on different effects, materials, concepts. With these ones, however, this is actually modifying the prompt itself. It's not modifying the existing output. If I wanted to see this, for example, as a science fiction version, you can see it now added science fiction to the bottom left here, and I have to regenerate the output. That means that I'm going to lose all of the existing output that I already have. Oh, that's nice. So I really like this one in the top right where you can see kind of the depths to the clouds. You can see that the sun is on one side of the earth here and that the night is on the other side. So I personally think that that's really cool. And if I don't particularly like the other outputs, perhaps they look a little strange, the AI messed it up a bit, what I can do is I can hover over and I can go to show similar results. So what this is doing is it keeps the existing image here and modifies the diffusion of the other three outputs to be as close to this prompt as possible. I can continuously do that. I can keep refreshing as many times as I want to and continue to try and get different outputs based on what I'm looking for. For example, maybe I, I like this one now and I could then click here and I would be able to use this image as the seed for generating the other outputs. This is actually a really powerful tool in Midjourney, you would have to generate a seed and control the seed and continuously input the image. So Adobe's interface here is actually quite excellent and makes it really simple for a new user, a beginner to AI generation to 
modify their input in a consistent way that they can iteratively improve the quality of their output. So let's say that I decided despite all of this output, I am still interested most in this image here. I can click download. Now the first time you click download, you can see there that Adobe applies their content filter. So that content credential that popped up there is a way for Adobe to detect what type of image has been created. For example, the Firefly generated content tagged it with an indicator that it was created using generative AI. This is to make sure that people are not confusing AI with the photos, for example. It's a way to introduce more authenticity into the internet. If I open it up, you can see that because this is beta, this is not for commercial use. They have included a watermark, but the resolution is actually quite good on this. One thing that I wanted to show you is that you're able to take the output that you like the most, and you're actually able to use that image in the prompt itself as a reference image. You can see here now below, that image has formed a part of the prompt, and all of the outputs now look a lot more similar to that initial input. And what's interesting too is you're able to slide between how much of the reference image you want to impact the prompt versus how much you want the text prompt to impact the output image. If I move closer to the reference image, it will regenerate the output and it'll make them look a lot more similar. So this is a really great way to fine tune the output of something that you really like already without having to start from scratch. But if you wanna modify a little bit more, you can go more to the prompt side and it's gonna introduce more diffusion. You can see here, they're quite a bit different now. Now, one thing I want to point out is that Fortunately, at this time, if you try to modify the aspect ratio with a square input, for example, an aspect ratio of one to one, you try to make it widescreen, the output gets a little bit messed up because it's trying to stretch to fill the rest of the image. If you are using a reference image as part of your prompt, then you should stick to the same aspect ratio. But let's see if I wanted to add a little bit more detail. Let's say I wanted to make it hyper-realistic. I can add a theme on top of the style that I've already applied on top of the, the content form. And you can stack all of these themes on top of each other and regenerate the image, continuing to use the reference image as the initial prompt. In summary, based on the aspect ratio, the content type, and the styles, I think it's really cool that Adobe Firefly allows you to iteratively modify the generated output. I think this adds a lot more fine tuning control to creators and will make it a lot easier for people to get involved in AI generation in the first place and be able to really apply their own style to the output based on a different combination of features, prompting, and reference images. Now let's look at the last element, which are ways to modify the color and tone, the lighting, and the composition. So similar to the themes and the styles, you can apply this over top of the image. At this point too, it's worth noting that if you keep the reference image in there, it will not necessarily apply the color and tone aspect to modify the output because it's pulling in too much from the reference image. So if I wanna modify for vibrant color, for example, I have to shift more to the prompt as the waiting for the generation, as opposed to the reference image. So you can see here, I modified the output, it adds a little bit of color. If I wanted to change that to more pastel, I can swap that out, perhaps remove the reference image, and then see how the AI will generate the output. This looks a little pastel-y, honestly not super great. Perhaps that's not something that really works with my prompt as much. Even here, it introduced some black and white, but it kept a lot of the color. Now that's probably because I have too many styles applied on top of each other. Can remove a few of them and see how it looks. That's a little better. So has a little bit of color. To show the last features, the lighting and composition, let's try a different prompt. Yeah, that actually looks quite lovely. You can see here I generated an almost photo realistic version, kind of a pastel graphic design one, another photo based one with a really blurry background and more of an animated version. So if I wanna modify the lighting, I can make it at golden hour, for example, apply the filter below and click generate. You can see now it modified the sky. It's got the golden hour lighting in the background. And if I wanna change the composition, perhaps I wanna make it have a close up. You can see how it zoomed in on the fire. If I want to change the composition again, perhaps shot from above, it swaps out the previous composition and modifies it to show it being shot from above the fire. So now let's take a look at a few more of the styles here. For example, let's say I want to look at it as if it were a layered paper. 
You can see how it completely modifies the entire style output for layered paper. This is a really powerful way to flip between different styles depending on the type of art output that you would like to use in your blog post, on social media generally, however you would like to use this. And that just gives a lot of power to creators to modify their content in a really easy way to help keep up with the demand of algorithms and also customize your content in a different way. The last effect that I want to talk about is the text effect. This is where you are able to take a letter or a word and apply a prompt to fill in the letters. So this is really fun for graphic design if you have a particular work that you're trying to create but you don't really feel like spending hours trying to draw in or grab different content fill from different places, you can use Adobe Firefly as a content fill for the different lettering. Layered colorful socks. Adobe will always start with Firefly as the base words if you click on the existing prompt suggestion, but you would be able to modify it here as well. Similar to the text image, you can go through and you can modify all the different variations of the text output in a way that you can iteratively improve the style that you're looking for. You can see below here, it has four different versions of the first letter of the word, and I can click through to see how it would be applied to the rest of the word. Let's try something else. So this is actually really cool. You can see that not only did it apply the campfire to the text, to the lettering, but it also extrapolated and put some stars and what looked like sparks coming off the wording as well. So it doesn't just fill in the text itself, it also applies graphics that go outside the bounds of the letter. So I actually like that one, let's download it. You can also submit to Firefly Gallery if you want other people to be able to take a look at what your prompts are and to be able to see what you're doing to provide inspiration for them like we talked about at the beginning of the video. So it's nice here, you can change all the font. I actually like this one a lot more. It feels more like my vibe. It's a little busy, so maybe I want to add some minimalism. You can see there's a bit more gray in the letters. It seems to have removed some of the elements within the text and then it kind of expanded the stars to continue going a little further outward from the letters. If you're trying to figure out what you want, your logo to look like, what you want your brand of wording or text to look like, you can experiment here and try and find something that is a lot more customizable than some of the logo generation platforms that I've seen in the past. Now let's take a look at some features that are up and coming. One of the features that I'm most excited for is the ability to train, to teach Adobe Firefly based on your own object or style. So what that means is I can, for example, take all of my photos and dump them into Adobe Firefly and train a version of the prompt with my own images so that I can then use the generative AI to modify my existing style. I think that this is a really powerful tool to be able to customize my content output, but in a way that still retains my unique style. As this feature comes out, I will make another tutorial video. Another really interesting one is the text to vector. Now what that means is you would be able to select specific elements in the image and move them around in Photoshop, for example. You would also be able to animate it. So you can, instead of painstakingly drawing all of these different elements separately, use AI to generate some stock images for your animations and then move it around almost instantly. Another interesting feature is to be able to use kind of like the content aware function in Photoshop to extend the aspect ratio of your image so that you can use it in different ways. You're also able to use inpainting, which means that you can cut out a particular element and then apply the generative AI model to only fill in the gap of the area that you've removed. If you like most of the image, but something seems a little bit off and you want to just modify a portion of the image, you're also able to generate patterns, 3D models can be converted to images and then modified to have different styles. You can create a brush based on an image and then modify the, the way that you paint using that image. You can take different styles like sketching and turn it into a colored image. And you can also create templates. Now looking at Adobe's beta page, there's also a few more features. You can see here it's talking about the applying your unique style to have customized diffusion and you'll also be able to naturally mix different photos together. So you can take two images, two of your photos, two of your previously existing works and you can put them together and have the AI blend them in a way that looks natural. You're also able to generate different style variations of 3D objects which is a pretty powerful tool. 
you're also able to modify video, which that is something I'm really excited for as well. If you're making a film, you're making something for social media and you've got your photo that you've already trained the data set on, but you want to apply a different vibe based on whatever film you're trying to create, you can change the mood without having to go search for hours looking for the perfect stock footage. You can also use it for graphic design. You can generate a high quality vector variation based on the drawing. So you can do the sketching yourself and then you can have Adobe Firefly convert it into a model that's modifiable for your own brand. Now, again, these are all features that are coming in the future, but together they really make up a large aspect of why I'm super excited to continue using Adobe Firefly and to continue experimenting with it in the future. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you found it informative and inspiring. The more I look into AI, the more excited I get at how easily creators are going to be able to leverage this technology to augment their creative output. I know it can seem like a scary concept to have a computer generating art like this, but there are many ways that creators can customize the output while still maintaining their style. I'll get into that more in another video. If you have any questions or concerns about Adobe Firefly or generative AI more generally, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. If you found this video helpful, I would really appreciate if you could like and subscribe. I will be making more AI tutorials in the future and would appreciate any feedback so that I know how to help people the best that I can. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.